Welcome to evening prayer. We come in the name of the Maker, who lit the world and breathed the breath of life for us. We come in the name of the Son, who saved the world and stretched out his hands to us. We come in the name of the Spirit, who encompassed the world and blessed us with yearning. We come and wait for the Lord, for in his word do we find hope. We come in the name of the Trinity of love, God above us, God beside us, God beneath us, the beginning, the end, the everlasting one. So let's pray. Kindle in our hearts, O God, the flame of love that never ceases, that it may burn in us, giving light to others. May we shine forever in your temple. Set us on fire with your eternal light. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Saviour and Redeemer. Christ of the least and the lowest. Christ of the lost and the betrayed. Christ of the wanting and the lonely. Draw close to us in our worship, that we may draw close to you. Lighten our darkness, and in your mercy hold us and defend us from all danger and peril. Surround us and fill us with your holy presence, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Reading from Acts chapter 10 and picking up at verse 9. About noon the next day, as they were on their journey and approaching the city, Peter went up onto the roof to pray. He became hungry and wanted something to eat, and while it was being prepared, he fell into a trance. He saw the heaven opened and something like a large sheet coming down being lowered to the ground by its four corners. In it were all kinds of four-footed creatures and reptiles and birds of the air. Then he heard a voice saying, Get up, Peter, kill and eat. But Peter said, By no means, Lord, for I have never eaten anything that is profane or unclean. The voice said to him again a second time, what God has made clean, you must not call profane. This happened three times, and the thing was suddenly taken up to heaven. Now while Peter was greatly puzzled about what to make of the vision that he had seen, suddenly the men sent by Cornelius appeared. They were asking for Simon's house and were standing by the gate. They called out to ask whether Simon, who was called Peter, was staying there. While Peter was still thinking about the vision, the Spirit said to him, Look, three men are searching for you. Now get up, go down and go with them without hesitation, for I have sent them. So Peter went down to the men and said, I am the one you are looking for. What is the reason for your coming? They answered, Cornelius, a centurion, an upright and God-fearing man, who is well spoken of by the whole Jewish nation, was directed by a holy angel to send for you to come to his house and to hear what you have to say. So Peter invited them in and gave them lodging. The next day he got up and went with them, and some of the believers from Joppa accompanied him. 
And so we continue on from the reading on Saturday from Acts chapter 10. Two men who hear the prompting of the Holy Spirit and respond. Cornelius, as we previously saw, and now Peter, as he responds to those words that are spoken to him, go immediately with the men and see him. Once again in Peter's dream we see that three times the words were repeated. And yet whenever we see Peter respond we see that immediacy there. Sometimes it takes more than once for something to be said for it really to sink in. It's quite comforting that Peter's no different. Now how many times will God speak to us before what he's asking of us sinks in? And when it does, will we respond with the same immediacy?
Oh, we pray. In these moments, we pray for ourselves and for others. Loving God, because we know we are better together, even when we are apart, we ask that you will enthuse us and enliven us to do your work, that we may take up our cross and follow you. We ask you to breathe new life into your people and give us courage to reveal you in word and in action. Creator of all, lead us and every people in the ways of justice and peace, that we may truly respect one another in freedom and in truth. Instill in us a real sense of wonder for the earth and all that is in it, and teach us to care creatively for our fragile world. God of truth, inspire with your wisdom all those whose decisions will affect the lives of others, that each one may act with integrity and courage. Be among us, Lord, to bring light into the darkness. Forgive us our wrongs, those done and left undone. And we ask for your grace on all whose lives are linked with ours. May we serve Jesus in one another and love as he loves us. And so we name before God those for whom we offer our personal prayers. God of the present moment, who in Jesus stills the storm and soothes the fragile heart, bring hope and courage, healing and comfort, a real touch of wholeness and well-being in body, mind and spirit to all for whom we pray. For you are God. So hear our prayers as we unite them and share them together in the words that Jesus taught us to say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. So we ask you to keep watch, Lord, on those who work or watch or weep this night. Give your angels charge over those who sleep. And the sick, give rest to the weary, soothe the suffering, and bless the dying. All this we ask 
In Jesus' name. Amen. So may God's extravagant love consume us. Jesus' life and passion inspire us, and the Spirit compel us to do ordinary things with an extraordinary love. As we go in peace, and in the courage and grace of Christ, to share God's extravagant love. And may his blessing rest upon us, now and always. Amen.